a second? I'm sorry. Uh, okay. Uh, item number two, a replot. Sixteen zero zero eight revision plan revision plan of uh, the Idaho and that tracks. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, Planning Commission. This is a unique configuration, as you have seen in your packet. But some of the best way to explain this one, the way I had to learn it, was to look at the existing conditions of the site. The property owner owns this long, unsubdivided piece of property that leads down to Thumb Butte Road. <coughs> Excuse and me, Frank, is that yeah. the driveway that we see? No, no. In that track? No. Uh, the, dri the access will be through the easements, and I'll get to that. Okay. But I want you to see, understand the existing conditions so you can understand the changing conditions. So this long piece is owned by the property owner. These two, these two parcels in the nap track, this is not part of any subdivision. This is unsubdivided. These two parcels are in the NAP track, <clears throat> excuse me, and lot 79 and 78 on the top of the screen are in the Outer Wild track. So what the property owner wants to do, and the reason it's a revision of plat versus just a replat, is to expand the boundary of the NAP track to include these two parcels that are in the Outer Wild track a portion of this property and a portion of this unsubdivided property, the top third, top 10% uh, of this property, to make one large auto, excuse me, one large nat track parcel that he would like to sell in the future to anybody that wants a nice large lot. So when you look at the Aerial photograph, see if I can get this to line up side by side. It really is more simple than it looks. It's really just this piece here, this, this bottom piece called nap tract, is this parcel here expanded to be made bigger. This piece, nap track, is reduced in size because of this bottom one being enlarged. But then once that's supposedly reduced in size, it will then be added to the main larger lot. This line here is basically being drawn across the top part of that unsubdivided piece so that this top little chunk will be added to these two lots and the remainder of this lot. So you'll end up with this lot, this lot, the top portion of this unsubdivided piece, and the remainder of this lot as one big, large parcel that you see up here. This parcel just simply got bigger in its own location. The access is going to be through existing easements, down to Thumb Butte Road, this existing access and utility easement through this parcel that's already been recorded years ago, <coughs> a new 30-foot wide access and utility easement that will then lead to the main new large parcel. It's unique to have that many easements, but it's, the, the easements are existing now on the southern piece, and then a new easement across property that he owns 30 foot wide, because a new one has to be 30 feet wide because it's going to enclose both water and sewer lines. And then that will be what is accessed or provide the access to this larger new lot. Now, that just didn't confuse you. I don't know what will. <laughs> does the larger new lot have water? Yes, it does. <coughs> there are two uh, water allocations in the nap track remaining. Yes, sir. Is this going to satisfy the fire department to get access up there? Yes. The, the staff has reviewed this over about the last month. It's been in review, and the accesses are provided. 
they, any new house, the fire department made a note that any new house up there will have to be sprinklered. Yeah, just because of the length, the length of the access. Yes, sir. Would require that. And the only reason it's a revision of plat versus a replat reviewed by staff is because of the boundary of the nap and the, the two tracks. The two tracks. If it was in the same tract, you you probably never would have seen this. But even if it was in the same tract, and a new easement being provided, that also kicks it into a revision of plat situation as well. The, it the one structure it has water, right? There's an existing home on here. It either has water by utilities on this uh, on this long linear piece. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure it has water either by well or by sewer and water lines. I'm not sure. It's not subject to this change. All this all this parcel's doing is giving a little bit more space to. But but you said the, the other. The, there's two waters. I mean, how I didn't think any vacant land had water on it automatically unless they get a water service agreement but unless they have a they have or there's two allocations left in that area on leslie's list again water is not a planning commission issue but it's there if they don't have it they'll have to do it by well or bring in an irrigated grandfather right they'll have other ways to get it but water is not really a discussion within the planning commission's authority anyway since there's He's splitting off the upper part of that long, narrow parcel. Isn't that actually a subdivision action? That portion is actually a lot line adjustment, <laughs> really. But, it, but it's an unsubdivided right. area. Correct. Mm -hmm. And that's, again, that kicks it into the revision of plot category. So that's it remains unsubdivided. This piece will, the remainder part, yes. Even, even the upper lot? No, that'll be all part of the uh, nap track now. Oh, okay, so that is going into a yes. subdivision. This right. this upper piece right. and then all this all that big piece ends up being in the nap track all by itself. So in other words, nothing changes except the uh, tract. Correct. The tract and the new easement. And the easement and the new easement, right. Going across that one <clears throat> that piece that doesn't have access now. And in a way it's a law it's a it's a large lot, but you had one lot, two lots, three lots. Mm. Now and a portion of this one, but really it's three lots combined into one. So How large is that? Three lot? lots to one lot. How large is that? The new one is what did I say? Two and a half. Was that the two and a half I saw? Two. Yes, that's the uh, two point nine eight acre piece, almost three acres. Thanks. Sure. Well, I sure don't see any problem with it. If he wants to do it, he can do it. I mean, it's kind of reminds me of playing tile rummy. <laughs> I agree. You know, you're, going, you're moving things around, trying to make it work. Uh, so, but uh, if he wants to do it, he can, you know, I don't have a problem with it. Anybody else have a problem with it? No, I just don't know why you just can't sell land with four different legal descriptions. He could sell it and then have the new owners do exactly what he's doing now. Absolutely, he could. But I think it makes it a lot easier to market when it's already been done. Yeah. <coughs> Terry, you got any comment on? No? Okay, I'm going to close the public hearing. <laughs> this was a public hearing, right? They yes, sir. Chance. <laughs> well, it was a public meeting. <laughs> uh, Speak now. Motion. We can take action, right? Yes, sir. Motion. motion well I'll, I'll give a motion I, I see it here I was looking for the, oh, okay. the abbreviated version right. recommended action move to recommend approval of RP 16-008 I'd second that okay we have a motion second any further discussion nope all those in favor raise your right hand say aye aye, aye. aye. okay uh, anything else Frank uh, it's, sir, the, I want to let you know that Creekview Village, the <coughs> workforce housing apartment complex on Miller Valley Road, received uh, general plan amendment and zoning amendment uh, this past Tuesday from the city council. It was a unanimous vote. So now they're just, at this point, that project has been approved locally. Now they'll be applying to the state 
I believe by March 1st for the, st for the state tax financing program. If they get approved through that, um, that project will move forward. Well, right. th they still have to go and get water, don't they, Jim? Yes, they, they still have to get a second level of water. Before they can apply it, I understand they have to have all of it available. <clears throat> Right. So, but it's for for the purposes outside for planning commission purposes because planning commission is not involved in water. Right. The rezoning's been done. The general plan amendments been done. The site plan's been approved. All the planning commission's recommendations have been accepted by the city council and approved. Frank, um, despite the fact that <clears throat> we don't deal with water, um, the issues brought been brought up, at least in my little world, about. So maybe you can address what the council's um, procedure is now for any new multifamily buildings that are proposed. I've had a couple of questions from people who've talked about uh, doing some multifamily units. And is it, I recall some conversation about they had to have some water in one year to apply for water in another year. I know that has nothing to do with what we do here, but just as a public information how does how's that working if somebody comes in today to want to build a hundred units in order to have a new apartment complex go through the process which includes your recommendation staff review your recommendation it has to have a water allocation prior to the end of 2016 some sort of process under underway if not partially funded with water prior to the end of 2016 in order for it to continue to move through the process in 2017. Should somebody want to come in today and build a, say, a new 100-unit apartment complex that hasn't been seen before, it's a brand new idea, the council's water policy that was adopted at the end of 2016 uh, said, said, no, you have to have it in process and, and some sort of water contract in 2016 or earlier for it to move forward. So we will never face again another potential so multifamily? No, it's a moratorium? That's only, no, oh. sir, it's not. It's only for 2017. This gets reviewed every year. Oh, okay. The city council is also going to uh, have a apartment or a housing study done to find out where we are with apartments. Because right now, really, we have a significant number of apartment units in process. Mm -hmm. The ones that you've looked at recently, <coughs> the ones that have been on the books for a while and just haven't broken ground yet, ones that were on the Exhibit A list prior to the temporary suspension uh, at the end of 2015 last year, those can still move forward. Like Boulder Hills was one of those uh, projects that just got approved by City Council Tuesday as well, that 20-unit apartment complex. So all those are still in the pipeline. But if I'm, you I'm, add them all up, I'm, we're probably I'm looking, looking at 800 forward. to 1,000 units in the works. So we're good. We're good on apartments for a while. Well, I, I'm not sure that we're here to decide if we have enough units or not, because the market pretty much does that. But I'm trying to find out, because I've been approached by someone that wants to build some apartments. Mm -hmm. uh, is, is there ever going to be water? Can they apply this year? That'll be a question for Leslie and the City Council. So the hold, the hold, the the, the, mor the moratorium then applies to just to seventeen. It's not a moratorium, sir. Well, what do you is, call it? Sure is. Well, it's <laughs> but it's for just multifamily. It's for multifamily units. For it's multifamily only, okay. Multifamily only, but it's I, a moratorium has a specific legal definition, and I'm not a lawyer, but I'm not going to go into it. I could. Okay. I'm not going to. Okay. But when we use the word moratorium, that's different. Well, the effect is still a moratorium. The, the, the effect is that <coughs> we will continue to process applications that have been in process prior to the end of 2016. Okay. We're putting Frank, I just want to know if somebody comes in today and wants, to, a hold wants to build 100 units, what, what are we going to tell them? We are going to tell them that they cannot apply for water in 2017. They could submit plans to get it all in the works and see how it plays out in 2018. That's what I would tell them. Pretty iffy. <laughs> what do you do if you got multifamily land and somebody wants to build on it? <sighs> Mr. Maverick, you're asking me questions. You're kind of politically grandstanding with me, and I, I, I'm not going to go there. Uh, that's a question that you need to ask the city council and the mayor. I, okay. I probably well, am. Well, <laughs> what, what about what about annexations? Could someone come in and want to annex land 
and it comes to PNZ and a lot of those other details have not been answered regarding water or, or anything else for that matter. Well, as you know, Mr. Sheets, there's water can also be irrigated grandfather rights, can also be bought with somebody. Prior year contracts that are on the books with people, with developers from previous years, there's all the ways to get water. Even, well, apartments, Mr. Maverick, going back to your uh, interrogation, so to speak. Uh, we, somebody, apartment complex could purchase it, grandfathered irrigated rights. They could go out and purchase water rights without going in and use that as for the apartment complex. So there is a method to do it. Yeah. It would just kind of not being real genuine if we would allow someone to come in and annex and then they wouldn't be able to develop the property. Well, obviously they'd know, well, about, they, they'd know about that yeah, though right. ahead of time. How long do we anticipate that this uh, provision mm -hmm. is gonna be? Uh, year to year? Right. Every year the city council reviews the next year's water allocation policy. Again, that's a question for city council, Mr. Member. No, I, I understand, but we're talking to the public and we, we, we are talking to council in a way too with our minutes. Right. Um, so it's not necessarily expecting you to have all the answers. <laughs> right, it's right. more posing some questions. Uh, what does one do with their property? And if they can't build apartments on it, uh, is that temporary? Is that permanent? That's really where I'm going. Oh, every year, as they have in the past, every year the water allocation policy gets re-reviewed and the policy is updated. What happens next year, we'll see. They can also go out and get the irrigated grandfathered rights. So they could still build the apartments if they can purchase the irrigated grandfathered rights. I think Mr. Marshall had a question. I want to go back to the Miller Valley apartment project. Yes, sir. Uh, I just wanted to see, was there any action taken regarding the suggestion for the desale lane into that property? Um, not at this time, no. That was, the action just taken recently was about the uh, rezoning <coughs> and the uh, general plan amendment. As the site plan gets refined, when civil plans come in, the developer acknowledged that they will be looking at a desale lane. Okay. That's a good question. Is uh, good can done with the water issue? Yep. No, I don't know. It was the apartment issue, not the water issue. I don't think so. I don't. <laughs> no. It was strictly an apartment issue. Anything else, guys? No. We're adjourned. Thank you.